and all the other sets of symbols that are either invalid because you know one configuration doesn't go to the other because it's not a legitimate move or because you just don't accept it all of those are called invalid computations the reason I'm mentioning this now because it's been brought up is that it's very interesting fact that the set of invalid computations of a Turing machine is a context-free language that's a weird thing but it's actually used in a lot of undecidability proofs I can describe to you exactly what kind of strings result in sets of configurations which are really not legitimate they can't get from one to another and that set is relatively simple valid computations are harder to describe they're not context-free languages they're complements of context-free languages which are not necessarily context-free all right that's a side point let's get back to here let's continue in the machine we now move to the right make this an X and now as you see we have to pass through all the zeros and we also have to pass through all the Y's so that's what Michael was saying a moment ago so we need Y Y R and I think this loop is okay now what's going to happen after a while let me rewrite the configuration let's do this let's say I wrote the last zero in and I change it to an X and now I'm moving to the right looking for ones then I finally find a one right and I turn this to a Y and I go back right I turn that last one to a Y we don't go back no Y one left we don't have a rule for we're not on blank. We went left. We went left, and then we're going back over all the Y's, and then we hit an X. This is left. This is right. And then, and then we hit an X, and what do we do? You go back right. So normally we hit a zero at this point, but now we hit a Y. That's our clue to get out of this loop. That's the while condition. If you see a Y leave it Y and go to the right and what's more keep going to the right until you eat up all the Y's and what are you hoping to find no Y's no you're hoping to find no ones. no ones right you're hoping to find just a blank and if there is a blank we're going to go to a cleanup state that's an accepting state there's a little bit of a difference between accepting states in Turing machines and accepting states in finite state machines if you end up in an accepting state in a Turing machine then the machine essentially stops okay you don't go on from an accepting state and the reason is that Turing machines need a way to stop otherwise they keep moving off to the right on blanks I mean there's nothing to stop them so final states stop Turing machines if you enter a final state you're done if it's an accepting state you say yes you can also have rejecting states final states that say stop and say no so that's different than any of the models we've had up till now you can have final states that say yes final states that say no this is a final state that says yes I accept the reason I'm continuing from here is because in a second I want to use this machine as a starting point to do this to make a bigger machine but for now before I clean up that's the end of this machine and this accepts all the strings of the form 0 to the n 1 to the n other questions so far if n is 0 yeah so I don't want to fix that so n bigger than or equal to 1 yeah I could fix it but I yeah no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do when you're in a final state there is a reason because in this state when I'm going to continue on and try to find 0 to the n 1 to the n 0 to the n I'm going to actually clean these up I'm going to turn them back to zeros and ones right what a mess this is like you know somebody gives me input and I draw all over it I want to clean it up before I'm done 
So I went left because I'm an anal neat freak. <laughs> All right. Questions? B, capital B. And what happens in this machine if you run out of ones before you run out of zeros? It just falls up. It just, if there's not an arrow, that, that's a, it stops. Right, right. The same as with every other model we've used. If there is an arrow here that shows up in the computation, but you know there's no arrow that, that corresponds to it, like you see a one in a particular state and it doesn't say what to do, then the machine crashes. Just like your a system error has occurred. And you don't accept. Okay, questions? All right, here's what we're going to do. I want to fix this machine or, or improve it a little bit to do this string, to do this language. This is a language that moves out further into the nebula, out here into the design, out of context free languages. You can't do this with just a stack. But it's really easy to manipulate this Turing machine to do it. Here's what we're going to do. This machine was great at getting 0 to the n, 1 to the n, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn these y's back into 1's, position my head right here at the beginning of all the 1's, and do the whole machine again. I'm just going to copy the machine over, except every place that I had a 0 here, I'll put 1's, and every place I had a 1 here, I'll put 0. So it'll accept you know, 1 to the n, 0 to the n. Yeah. Why don't you just do it all one time? I could. I could do that. I could, I could change this to skip over here. I could have x, y's, and z's. Absolutely, I could do it that way. I didn't do it that way because I want to kind of give you the feeling that, that Turing machines can have subroutines. And you can use them to build up on themselves. But you could certainly do it just all at once. OK, questions about that? Let me, let me just show you how to clean up this thing. So here's what we do. We, uh, if we see a y, we turn it to a 1 and move left. And the second we see an x, I'll put a special dollar sign symbol to make sure I never go back there again, and I go to the right. So it looks like this when I'm ready to continue. x, 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 sorry, x, x, dollar sign, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, presumably. That's what it looks like. And now I would go into a state that's ready to continue and start reading these ones. And I would have a machine at this point that looks exactly like this machine, except every place I have a 0, I would put a 1, and every place I have a 1, I would put a 0. And it does the same thing, and there's an overlap. I showed that the first set of zeros equals the first set of 1s, and the first set of 1s equals the second set of zeros, so they're all the same. And that accepts 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n. And you can finish that example. So this would not become a final state anymore. This would lose its final state status. We'd continue, and the only final state would be at the end. Copy this machine over, change zeros for ones, ones for zeros. Question? You would, you would have to copy the machine over. You'd have to copy the machine over. You certainly can't just send it back there. You could send it back there, I guess, if you wanted to do a lot of work. What could you do to send it back there? Yeah. You could turn the y's to zeros and the zeros to ones and then put it back here and then send it back up to that spot. You could do that. But then you need a special way to not keep doing this. You, so it, it's just a programming decision, how you want to do it. Yeah, Michael? What's the need for the dollar sign? Oh, just, just if you've got to do something else later. I, it, <laughs> the, it's often you put these special symbols in Turing machine programs to kind of indicate like, like, like a marked spot. Uh, well, let me talk about some examples of, of why, in this case, there aren't any particular reason, because we're, we're done. But, but there's a lot of other places where you might do it, and it's just kind of a good thing to do. Mark the left end so that we know that we're working with this part of the tape, and everything past here is just garbage. We don't care about it. So it's just a way of marking your garbage area. Okay, questions about this? This is a notation that is mildly different, and I don't like it as much as this. You are free to use whatever notation you want as long as you make it clear what the Turing machine is doing. Right? And, and the book is not too different than this, but, but sometimes the book has two things, and sometimes they have three things. This is very consistent. The symbol that's on the tape, the symbol you're writing, move right or left. And it's always the same. 